Hi everyone, my name is Deanna and welcome to my channel about stories that happen in life. Sit back, pour yourself a hot drink. I think this is going to be very interesting. Well, before we start, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a lot of new and useful videos. Alexander approached the bus stop, took some change out of his pocket, counted it, then grinned. So it means that if I take a minibus now, then later I won't have enough for bread and I'll be left without dinner. And if I get to college on my own, I won't go to bed hungry. I've got two whole packs of instant noodles at home. I'll buy bread and mayonnaise on the way home and have a real feast. Without thinking anymore, Sasha looked at his watch, returned to the sidewalk and hurried towards the medical college where he had been studying to be a paramedic for almost two years. To cut a little short the long way, the guy turned into the courtyards and almost immediately saw an old woman who was leaning against the wall of the house. She was ill and Sasha rushed to her aid. He did it in time because the old woman had already started to fall. Alexander picked her up in his arms and sat her on the nearest bench. Now be patient, he said. I'll call an ambulance. No need, whispered the old woman. Drops in the bag, medicine. Get the vial. Sasha quickly did everything she asked, and when he looked at the name of the medicine, he immediately realized that with the health of the grandmother, all is not so good. Well, what are you, he said, continuing to hold her and allowing her to calm down after taking the drops. You in no case cannot take such a risk and walk on the street alone. You have seizures regularly, don't you? She nodded her gray head and spoke in a weak voice. Yes, grandson, but it's nothing. I'm used to it and I don't have a helper. I live alone. I wanted to buy some milk this morning, but you see, I didn't even get to the store. What's your name? Alexander asked. Vera Vasilyevna, Sasha. Oh, Sasha, what a beautiful name you have. My late husband was also called Sasha but I called him Shura, he liked it better. The old woman was silent for a while, then she said, but I'm better now. But I want to ask you, Sasha, to take me home. I live over there on the fourth floor. I used to like it, but to be honest, it's so inconvenient. When I was young, I didn't notice the heights. But the older I get, the harder it is to get up and down. At least the elevator almost always works, but sometimes it breaks down and then it takes weeks to repair it. Listening to his new acquaintance, Sasha helped him to the entrance and then went up to the apartment. To his surprise, Vera Vasilyevna lived in fairly decent conditions, although her three-room apartment was more like a museum. Don't be surprised, grandson. The old woman noticed his confusion. Myshura was the son of an employee of a secret research institute. He got this apartment. He also worked in this institute. He defended his doctorate there. Oh, how long ago it was. And this winter, it's already 12 years since his death. And I'm living out my life alone. Do you have children? No, Sashenka, not anymore. I had a son, Sergei, our only favorite, and a late child. But he didn't have much time to live. He grew well and fell in love. But the girl he got was not a good, beautiful girl with no soul. Nastya was very young. She was barely 18 at the time. And yet we didn't like her right away. I don't know why. In general, we were against the wedding. Even Sirioza quarreled about it. Then we made up, of course, but it was too late. He and Nastya went back to the town where she was born. But it wasn't all for good. Here Sirioza studied and worked. And there he started drinking, and we didn't know. I guess his family life wasn't so smooth, but he was proud, he didn't want to admit it. Of course, sometimes he called us, but he always said everything was fine. Except that one day, there was a completely foreign voice on the phone. The stranger introduced himself as a militia major and said that our Sirioza had died in a fight. Then at the trial, we found out that he was jealous of Nastya, and got into a fight. There was a trial? Yes, I asked sympathetically. Alexander was, sighed the old woman. The guy got a little bit of time. They thought he pushed Siriosa by accident. That's how it ended. I don't know about Nastya. 
Vera shrugged her shoulders. We never saw her again. She didn't even come to the funeral. Sasha looked at the old woman, realized that she was greatly disturbed by her story, and stroked her wrinkled hands affectionately. Don't worry so much, Vera Vasilyevna, you need to take care of yourself. Health is an important thing, you shouldn't joke about it. That's what I'm telling you as a future doctor. Yes, the old woman perked up, so you're studying medicine. Yes, I'm about to graduate from college. Good for you. Vera Vasilyevna noticed that Sasha furtively looked at his watch and gasped. So why am I keeping you? You're late for class. Thank you, sweetie, for everything. It's okay. The important thing is that you're feeling better. She wanted to get up to walk him to the door, but Sasha held her back. Don't, don't. I'll do it myself. You rest. I'll drop by after school to check on you, to see how you're doing. If you can, of course you can, said the old lady. I'll be waiting for you, Sasha. Sasha was still late for college, but on his way back he went to the store and used the last of his money to buy his new acquaintance some milk. The old woman saw the package in his hands, splashed her hands and smiled. What a good man you are, caring and attentive, but please come in. Let me give you tea and scones, and you tell me about yourself. And Sasha told that once lived with his parents in a distant Siberian village, and thought that he too would spend his whole life there. About how always so cheerful and restless, once splashed her hands and sank heavily to the floor without even a cry. The attack was sudden and merciless, and the paramedics arrived too late in the snow. The ambulance simply couldn't reach their village and got stuck in a huge viscous puddle for a long time. I told him how my father screamed terribly, unable to cope with the misfortune that had befallen him. And then, after the funeral, he went on a long heavy bender, forgetting that he had a son. For some time, I lived in the house of a great aunt. Sasha finished his story. Aunt Nadia is kind but she has a small house and the family, as they say in our area, you cannot stir with a spoon. Husband, father-in-law, mother-in-law, brother and four children. And then there's me. Especially in order not to interfere with all the others, I equipped myself with an attic and lived there until the cities. And only when fall came, I went downstairs to sleep on a mattress on the floor in the room of my three younger cousins. Poor boy. Vera Vasilyevna shook her head. But tell me please, what your father did for a year and a half he drank black. Everything that was valuable, took out of the house, did not want to see anyone, and did not communicate with anyone. When Aunt Nadia and I went to see him and tried to convince him to take his head, he yelled at us and drove us away. Sometimes I thought he was crazy. One day his heart gave out. We came to check on him and brought him hot cakes, but it was all over. Oh, our sins, our grave sins, sighed Vera Vasilyevna, pouring tea for Sasha. Well, how did you get to our town? Tell me. Sasha shrugged his shoulders. Our house was spacious and had more rooms. Aunt Nadia asked me to let them live in my house. Of course, I agreed. After my father's funeral, they moved in with me almost immediately. My in-laws and Aunt Nadia stayed in the old house, and she moved in with Uncle Petya and the children. I had already finished school and was going to medical school. Everyone knew I was leaving. And one evening Aunt Nadia started talking about how it would be nice if I gave my house to her. I took you in when you were sick, fed you, took care of you, and didn't hurt you. Now you've grown up and become a free bird. What do you want in our village? Go to the city, go to school there, get a place to live, get married, and we'll stay here. We'll stay, if you don't mind, of course. Vera Vasilyevna looked at him. And you? I agreed, and when I turned 18, I signed everything. Well, she's right, I'm alone, and I won't be lost. And she has so many mouths to feed. And our house is in a good place, the store is nearby, and the school and her house are on the outskirts. You're kind, Sashenka, you helped your family and took pity on me. Where do you live? I rent a room in the barracks on Savitskaya Street, you know? I know, Vera Vasilyevna nodded. 
It's a hole, but it's cheap, Sasha laughed, and the old woman looked at him carefully. Listen, move in with me, there's plenty of room left, it's close to your college. But you're alone, I'm alone too. Besides, you need to look after me, to go to the store, to buy medicine, to give me an injection after all. Especially since you're practically a doctor, and I don't have to pay rent. And I'll feed you myself, you're so thin. My pension is good, so I'll have enough for food and medicine. Sasha thought for a moment, then said, Well, okay, but I will also buy groceries. And in general, my scholarship is small, of course, but I work part-time sometimes, and I go unloading at night. But that's enough, smiled Vera Vasilyevna. Let's agree right away. You have a study, and I, and with her priority. So no part-time jobs. Enough of you, and that you will look after me. I'm not a gift. So we'll make a barter. My lodging and food, your help and care. Deal, deal, laughed Sasha, and a couple of hours later, he went to his barrack to get his things and returned to Vera Vasilyevna. Surely fate had not sent some old woman by chance. The bright, clean, spacious room that Vera Vasilyevna gave him made him delighted, and as he fell asleep, Sasha once again thanked the heavens that they had sent him such unexpected happiness. Vera Vasilyevna was happy too. She quickly fell in love with Alexander, called him grandson and Sashenka, sincerely rejoiced at his help and the fact that he relieved her of loneliness. Sasha filled her days with warmth, and he could and managed to do everything, cooked lunches and dinners, put the apartment in order, deftly coped with the iron, and easily fixed what required repair. I took care of the old woman's health in a way that not all relatives do. Neighbors watched with interest as he accompanied her on walks in the park and carefully wrapped her with a warm plaid when Vera Vasilyevna sat down on a bench to breathe fresh air. Winter caught on. One cold December evening, Sasha came home and was surprised to realize that Vera Vasilyevna was not alone. Vasilyevna was not alone indeed. In the kitchen sat a beautiful black-haired woman and a boy about the same age as Sasha. They both turned and looked at him. Vera Vasilyevna brushed away the tears from her wrinkled cheeks. Sashenka, meet Nastya, I told you about her. You remember, my Sergei's wife, and this is his son, Vadim. Imagine, I didn't even realize I had a grandson. Nastya was angry with me for a long time, but now she's decided to make up. My God, what a blessing. Sasha, why are you standing there? Sit down quickly, we'll have dinner. For the first time in a long time, Alexander felt unwanted. Nastya and Vadim were weighed down by his presence, and he hurriedly swallowed the hot tea, apologized, and, referring to the preparation for exams, went to his room. Half an hour later, Vera Vasilyevna knocked on his door. Sashenka, I suggested that our guests stay with us. You won't mind, Vera Vasilyevna, how could I? Sasha smiled. That's good. So instead of one grandson, I will now have two at once. You'll make a bed for him in your room. There are two sofas here. Of course, nodded Sasha. You are a very kind boy. I'm sure you'll be friends. But the friendship between Sasha and Vadim did not work out. Arrogant, arrogant. Vadim immediately began to behave like a master. He didn't study, didn't work and preferred to hang out on the phone all day. Sasha was pissed off by his habit of throwing things around and making a mess everywhere. A couple of times he told him about it but ran into a wall of contempt and indifference. Talked Sasha to Anastasia, but the latter only shrugged her shoulders. He is here, at home. And who are you? she asked. She now managed the kitchen, and often Sasha went to bed hungry, but he did not want to complain believing Vasilyevna. He saw that she was incredibly happy, and nothing bad simply does not notice. But in early February, the irreparable happened. Sasha was at college when he was summoned to the principal's office. He was very surprised because he thought that Pavel Valentinovich does not even know about his existence. And he was completely taken aback when he realized that two policemen were waiting for him. Vesodov Alexander, Yes, I'm the one you know. 
Vera Vasilyevna Seltova. Yes, that's my landlady. I rent a room from her and take care of her. Yes, you've been taking care of her, boy. One of the policemen grinned. There was a report on you that you wanted to poison the old lady. I mean, Alexander was speechless. What are you saying? What about Vera Vasilyevna? She has severe poisoning. She's in intensive care. Who's giving her medicine? I whispered. Sasha slumped down on the table against the wall. That's right. The prints have been taken. You're a medic, so you know about drugs. You infiltrated the poor grandmother in the trust and made her write off the apartment to herself, but you didn't want to wait for her natural death. Yes, you decided to speed everything up. Now you'll get a good sentence for it. She's not granny. Don't you dare call her that, indignantly exclaimed Sasha, who did not immediately get the meaning of the rest of the policeman's words. But when he realized what he was saying, he turned as pale as a sheet. Wait, who forced Vera Vasilyevna to attribute the apartment to me? I was never forced to do this and trust did not rub. We just live together, that's all. The forces changed his voice cracked strangely, and Sasha added with deadened lips, and did not poison anyone. That's not true. Well, yes, it's not true, the policeman frowned. Let your Vera Vasilyevna say thank you to her relatives, and that's if she pulls through. Doctors don't give any guarantees. Well, and if she dies, you get pregnant, dove on the full. Alexander was taken to the police station and interrogated there for a long time, then sent to the detention center. Sasha's head was splitting from the unbearable pain. Tiny bedbugs, swarming on the bunks, did not give a minute's rest, and his only salvation was to walk from corner to corner, measuring the slowly passing time with his steps. For almost two days Alexander was alone in his cell, then some skinny old man stabbed with faded green tattoos moved in. The pioneer asked Avia Sasha with prickly gray eyes. Sasha nodded silently. Nothing, you'll get used to it. The old man grinned hoarsely. It's only the first time it's scary, and then it'll go smoothly. I wish I had some peppermint tea. They never spoke again. But at night Sasha, sitting on the floor and now and then falling into a heavy half-dream, shuddered when he heard the heavy groaning of his neighbor. He went over and bent over him. What's wrong with you, you're not well cramps again, Sasha listened to the old man's complaints and demanded that he lie on his back. You'll feel better now, he promised, rubbing his palms to warm them. At first, Sasha's patient cried out in pain, but he began to quiet down. And when Sasha wiped his soaked hands on the ceiling and stepped aside, he easily got up and sat down. Are you a doctor? He asked. Die almost to the diploma of a paramedic is not much left. And then there's all this. What did you just do to me? Therapeutic massage. I've always been fascinated by it. And the acupuncture points and all that. You've got poor circulation. Massage is essential. And lymphatic circulation. From what you've told me, the only thing I've remembered is that I need a massage. Okay, we'll figure something out. What's your name? I'm Arkady, Crow, and Sasha Zodov. Good ones. You'll make a doctor. Zodov Sasha? I don't think so. Alexander circled the camera with his hand. It doesn't look like a hospital. Yeah, tell me everything. Maybe I can help you. They're gonna let me out of here in the morning anyway. I think my lawyer's already making a fuss. So you've done me a favor? I'll be useful, Arkady grinned. He was right. In the morning they came for him, and he winked at Sasha. Do not drift, doctor, ours will win. And two days later, Sasha was again called to the investigator, and he announced that Sasha was free. What about Vera Vasilyevna? First of all, asked Sasha. She's fine, she was transferred to a good clinic, as if by acquaintance. Arkady some Arkady tried. I talked to her. She didn't remember Arkady, but she told me that it wasn't your fault. Her former daughter-in-law, Anastasia, found her will and decided with her son to bring the old woman to her grave and get rid of you at the same time. They're already testifying, accusing each other. That night, when they found the will, they didn't scandalize Vera. V didn't give Vera a scandal. 
And when she got sick, they gave her too much medicine. That's why it turned out that way. And you, kid, you're free. I've already called the college and explained everything. Well, don't let them touch you there. So I can go, Alexander asked. Well, if you don't want to stay, go, joked the investigator. Thank you for your hospitality, Sasha grinned, but I'd better go. He returned home and stood under the shower for a long time, washing away the troubles of the last few days, and then changed his clothes and ran to the clinic where Vera Vasilyevna was. Sashinka Granson. The old lady rejoiced. I almost went crazy when I found out about everything. You must forgive me, old woman. It was all because of me. It was all my fault. But I meant well. You shouldn't have made a will for me. You have a grandson. No, Sashenka, he's not my grandson. I checked everything because I'm not out of my mind. I took the necessary tests for DNA. And when Nastya went through my things and found my will, I showed her the test results. But what happened next? You know what happened. The coroner promised they'd get probation. I asked him to do it. I just have a question for you. The doctors told me that you asked Arkady to help me. Who is he? I don't know him. Casual acquaintances, smiled Sasha, remembering his strange friend in misfortune. Suddenly the door to the ward opened and the head doctor of the clinic appeared on the threshold. Well, as our dear patient wishes, smiling he asked, and after listening to the gratitude of the old lady, turned to Sasha. So you are that excellent future doctor, you were recommended to me by a respected person in certain circles. Come to my office, let's sign this conversation. Yes, I want you to work for me when you graduate. Soon. That's good, that's good. A few years went by. Sasha worked in the best clinic in the city and lived the same way together with his grandmother, who became a family man for him and was quite happy. And when the nurse Aliona mysteriously whispered that the same Arkady came to him for a massage, he smiled and nodded at her. Go ahead and make mint tea. Well, you know everything yourself.